Hello, everybody. This is John Mark Johnson, Jr. again, host of Reform GGA, and I'm here to continue the series on double action, single action autoloaders. In the past couple of videos, we've discussed things like what is a double action, single action autoloader. We've discussed what some of the advantages and disadvantages of them are, and we've also talked about gun safety. In this video, we're going to be discussing the controls on a double action, single action autoloader. So to get into that, we're going to take our example gun here. This is a Bursa TPR-9C. It's just standing in for the type for us, not saying that every double action, single action autoloader gun is exactly like this, but it is representative of the type and I usually have it with me, so we're using it as our example gun. I'm gonna take this gun and we're first gonna check and make sure that it's clear. So we look at the bottom and there's no magazine in there and I can feel that there's no magazine in there. Next, we're going to go ahead and open up the gun and I can look inside the chamber and see that there's nothing. I can feel that there is nothing in there. And if I can angle it just right, you guys should be able to see nothing in there. So this gun is now safe to manipulate. Let's go ahead and do some manipulations. I'm gonna go to a little bit more convenient direction here. But the reason why I was facing that direction originally is because that was my safe direction in this particular environment. I'm in a hotel room on an upper story and so that was basically my exterior wall. That was my safe direction. Could have also pointed the gun up, but that would have looked a little bit strange. But whenever you're manipulating a gun, you never ever want to assume that it's unloaded. And so until you actually check, you need to make sure that you're uh, being very safe with the gun, accounting for the act that it might possibly go off. So I had my trigger figure off of the trigger. I had the muzzle pointed in a safe direction. I, of course, was not assuming that it was unloaded because that's why I had it pointed in that direction in the first place. I also know what is out that way. Yes, that's an external wall, but I also can look out the window and I can see what is out there. So following all the basic rules of gun safety, now that we've checked it, we know that it's not loaded. Now we can manipulate it a little bit more freely, but always make sure that you're safe. All right, so we've done that. We've had our, our safety lecture for the day. Let's talk about the controls. On double action, single action autoloaders, there are up to, not always this many, but up to seven different controls. And some of the controls are fairly well known to people who even aren't gun people. They'll know what the controls are just because guns are in culture enough that they know at least certain parts of the gun. One of the most famous controls, of course, is the trigger. And the basic operation of the trigger, most people understand just fine. You pull it, it makes the gun go boom. Okay. The other controls, though, sometimes aren't as well known. Another control that is on them, on a double action, single action autoloader, that actually is a very useful control, is the hammer. Lots of people don't think of it as an actual control, but it is a control. It's something that you can manipulate with your thumb, or whatever finger you happen to be using, but usually easiest with the thumb. And there are reasons for why you do that. One is that if you're carrying it with the hammer forward, which we've talked about in previous videos, so carrying it with the hammer forward, you do that a lot of times for safety reasons. When the hammer's forward, the trigger is much harder to pull. Gives you a degree of safety that way. Um, but if you've pulled the gun and you decide that you need to use it, but you don't need to use it immediately, but you might need to use it very precisely. So let's say uh, you're someone who's decided to go out hunting and a, a varmint pops up that you decide is, is suitable for taking and you have a little bit of time, you're not necessarily gonna do a quick draw on your on your rabbit, uh, might not need to. You usually wanna be fairly slow and methodical about it. And if you have the time, and if you're reasonably sure that the sound isn't gonna spook the animal, you might want to pull the hammer back so that the trigger pull is lighter so that you can get a more precise shot. Okay, that's one reason why you might wanna do it. Another advantage of pulling back the hammer, not only is that it gives you a lighter, crisper shot, another advantage is that it makes manipulating the slide easier, and the slide counts as another control. So if the hammer is back and I pull back on the slide, it's going to be a little bit lighter because normally the slide, go ahead and drop the hammer here, normally the slide when it operates, you know, the there's an explosion that goes off in the chamber, gun, uh, the bullet goes out one side, and the slide is pushed back in the opposite direction. And a lot of times the slide has to overcome the hammer. And there's also a recoil spring on the inside of the gun that that slide is going to have to fight against. Well, the bullets is more than powerful enough to fight against both of those just fine. But people, 
sometimes are not strong enough to deal with both of those. So if I pull back on the hammer and then pull back on the slide, it makes manipulating the slide just a little bit easier. And manipulating the slide shouldn't be too terribly difficult for you. Of course, make sure that you have a good grip on the gun. Make sure that your trigger finger is not on the trigger or on the trigger guard. Make sure it's on the frame of the gun. Okay. Not on the slide either because we're going to be pulling back and forth on the slide. And then on the rear part of the slide, make sure you get a good grip on it. And most of the time on the rear end of the slide, they'll have some striations for you to grab a hold of it. And then on your primary hand, your shooting hand, it's going to push out and the hand that you're manipulating the slide with is going to come back. So it's going to be kind of a push-pull thing. And that's how you open up it. And you should be able to hold it open for a decent amount of time on your own. Okay. So you should be able to pull it open and hold it open for a somewhat prolonged period of time like I'm doing here. Okay. And then also you'll notice that when I release the slide, I released it with my hand still on. Now, a lot of times when the gun is firing, of course, it'll come back and it'll slam forward on its own. And while it's firing, that's okay because there will be rounds that are getting fed into it. And those rounds are actually going to slow down the slide just a little bit to keep all the parts from hitting each other you know, quite hardly. Uh, if you don't have rounds being fed into it, though, and you just let that slide slide forward on its own, all the main components that lock together are going to get slammed together, and what it's going to do is it's going to weaken the parts of them that are supposed to lock up. So for example, on this gun, there are a couple of pieces on the back of the barrel uh, that actually lock into the slide, and you want that lock up to be nice and tight. But if I let this gun slam forward, just pull it back, and I'm not going to do it, but if I just pull it back and let it slam forward, uh, that would actually put a lot of extra wear and tear on those pieces, and it could actually potentially bend some things on the inside depending on the design of the gun. And so it's not a good idea to let the slide come slamming home if there's no round that's being loaded. If a round is being loaded, that's an entirely different story. But if you're doing it by hand and there's no round that's inside of it, we already checked to see that this gun is empty. If there's no round that's being loaded, you want to guide it home nice and uh, nice and gently. It's kind of like the same concept of a car door. It's not a good idea to slam a car door. In the same way, it's not a good thing to let the slide slam home. Okay. But you do want to have a slide that is fairly easy to manipulate. You want to be able to hold it back on your own for a while. Okay. And if you can't do that, then that particular gun might not be the gun for you. There's lots of semi-autos out there that frankly have fairly difficult slides to operate. But there are ones that are out there, like this particular one, a Bursa TPR-9C, that actually has a pretty easy slide. Another uh, double action, single action gun that I've been fairly impressed with the slide on is the Springfield XDE. -E. Sorry, XDE. So the Springfield XDE is one that has a fairly easy to manipulate slide. This Bursa TPR-9C has a pretty easy to manipulate slide. So if you're having trouble with other brands that are out there, consider looking at Springfield or Bursa. Uh, but that being aside, okay, we've talked about those controls, so everybody knows how a trigger works, at least in basic. Operation of the hammer controls how heavy that trigger pull is going to be, and pulling the hammer back makes manipulating the slide easier, and the slide is how you manually load and unload the gun. Now there's a couple other controls that we still need to talk about. In fact, there's at least three more controls, well, four depending on how you count it, that we need to talk about. One of them has to do with the slide. A lot of times, yes, you should be able to hold the slide open manually, but a lot of times it's nice to be able to hold the, uh, for the gun to hold open its own slide so that you can do other things with it. And also just mechanically while the gun is shooting, it's nice if the gun gets to its last bullet and it automatically holds the slide open for you so that you know that it's empty. That is all accomplished with this button right here. Now this front button here actually isn't a control on Bursas. They have a little takedown lever here. That's all that, that is. I'll go ahead and show you guys how that works. So this one, you flip it down and then you can take the slide and the frame apart. That's not actually an operating control. That's, that's just part of uh, disassembling and, and cleaning the weapon. Okay, so that front one we're not going to worry about. 
it's just there for disassembly. It's not an actual operational control. But the one right behind it, that is an operational control. That is the slide stop. And the way that you operate it is you push up on it. So I'm just going to use my thumb here and push up on it while I'm pulling back on the slide. And then you can see it'll um, get stay up and it will keep the slide locked back for me. Okay. And this allows me to manipulate the gun, check inside to make sure that it's empty, things like that. Okay, so that is what that is for. Now, a lot of people, when they're done with the gun being open, they don't need it to be open anymore. They'll just come and they'll push on that um, button and let the side go home. And like I said, that's really not good on guns, uh, especially the more the guns, uh, typically guns with more delicate triggers tend to be worse in this regard, uh, but it is really not a good idea to let the slide slam home unless you're actually loading a bullet into it. And I'll show you guys that in a few seconds. Uh, not with an actual live round, but I have some dummy rounds we'll use. But instead of pushing down on the button to get the slide to go home, just pull back on the slide and then guide it forward. All right, so walk it back, pull back on the slide, and then guide it home. All right. And then the button that is behind that one is the button that is used to put the gun on safe and also to decock the hammer. This one is a two-in-one control. Uh, some double action, single action guns work like that, some don't. Sometimes they'll just have a decocker on them. For example, my P09 only has a decocker. On other guns, it will only be a safety. My CZ75 Compact is like that. It only has a safety. It doesn't have a decocker. This one, it puts both of them together. And there are other guns that are out there that will actually have two separate buttons for each function. I think some of the SIGs are like that, for example. But this one combines it as a two-in-one. So if I push up on that button, the hammer drops, but it's not going to set off any round that would be in the gun. Because at the same time that this lever is coming up, there's a little block inside of the gun that comes up and it keeps the hammer from coming forward all the way. So it goes to this position and it just stops. It doesn't actually go all the way forward. And then as long as this um, particular lever stays up, I also cannot pull the trigger and have the gun go off. It, this gun has a deactivation system in it, so the trigger, you can pull on it as much as you want, but it's not going to move the hammer, and the hammer is what winds up firing the gun. So it dis disengages the trigger completely as long as this lever is up. Now if I put the lever back down, then the trigger will do what you expect the trigger to do, but if it's up, it disengages it. Now, personally, I don't like these kinds of safeties that disengage the trigger as much because there is some mechanical weakness to that kind of a system in that uh, they do tend to break a little bit easier. Uh, they do have an advantage in that uh, when it comes time to holster, if you put the gun on safe and it comes time to holster and that trigger gets caught on something, just use my finger as an example here, hopefully your trigger finger isn't in there, but if it gets caught on something and you take the safety off, it's still not going to set off the gun with a deactivation trigger. Okay, so that part of it is nice. Um, but the other way that safety is going to work is you turn on the safety and then it does not allow the trigger to move at all. It just stays rigid in there. That's another way that safety is going to work. And those ones I typically like a little bit better uh, just because they're mechanically stronger. They can be a little bit disadvantageous for uh, holstering them because if you holster with the safety on, with one that locks the trigger forward and you put pressure on that trigger, some, you know, your pieces of clothing got caught in the trigger or something like that, and you take off the, the safety, then that piece of clothing or whatever that was pushing on the trigger can set off the gun. It's just one of the, the pros and cons. And we'll talk about holstering more in, a, in another video, so don't worry about that too much right now. Um, but that's how that works. So push it up it makes the gun safe can't fire and also if the hammer is down pushing up on it will drop that hammer forward okay makes it nice and safe now and that's where the the double action gun gets its name from is when you have the hammer forward that trigger is much harder to pull 
and it makes the gun a little bit safer to deal with. Like I said, we'll talk about holstering and those kinds of concerns in a different video, but just a heads up, that's where a lot of that manipulation is going to come in. But like I said, some guns do this very different ways. Sometimes they'll have one button that decocks it that uh, uh, lets the hammer come forward uh, and a different button that will put it on save to make it so that you can't fire when you pull the trigger. Um, sometimes it's one or the other and things like that. There's different things that can go on there. And then the last button, but certainly not least, is the magazine release. And that is this button that is down here at the end of the trigger guard. That button, when you push it, is what lets the magazine come out. So those are all the basic controls that we have on a double action, single action autoloader. You have, of course, the trigger, you have the hammer, you have the slide, you have the slide stop, you have the, the decocker, which brings the hammer forward. Sometimes this is a safety, sometimes it's a decocker and safety combined all into one. And then of course, uh, the magazine release. Those are all the operational controls. Now I do need to say one thing is that some of the double action, single action guns don't actually have a decocking button. Uh, for example, my CZ75 Compact is like that and it actually makes it very annoying. Um, but there is still a way to decock them. It's just a little bit more involved uh, process. Um, and I do believe that I have a video on my channel on the CZ75 Compact. So if you want to know how to decock a gun that doesn't actually have a decocker button, check that one out. It'll show you how to do it. But most of the time, and especially for new shooters, I would recommend that you get a double action, single action gun that actually has a decocking button built into it. There are ways to do it if it doesn't have the, the button built into it, but it's a whole lot easier and a whole lot safer with the button. All right, now let's go through some manipulations. Here I have a magazine that is loaded with dummy rounds. These are just Azum snap caps, Azum brand snap caps in 9mm because this is a 9mm gun. These are not live rounds. They do not have any powder charge in them. They don't even have a proper bullet. The front end of these things is actually fixed uh, to the, the faux casing. Uh, these are completely inert. They cannot go off. They're just dummy rounds. And I thought I would take these and show you guys how to manipulate the gun a little bit with it. And these are really a great training tool. If you're not very familiar with firearms, these are handy things to have around because you can get used to loading and unloading magazines. You can get used to loading and unloading your gun and even doing dry fire practice to a certain extent. These ones aren't particularly great for dry fire practice. They have a little resin um, a spot in the back that will absorb the impact of the firing pin, but it doesn't last forever. It lasts like 250 times of doing that, of dry firing the gun. Uh, so it's not as long lasting as some of them are. There are actually some of these that are blue that have a little plunger on the inside that when you hit the firing pan against it, it just kind of has a little spring action and those last a lot longer. But these ones will do for at least a little bit of dry fire practice. But the main thing that's nice about them is that you can uh, practice manipulating the gun as if it was loaded, but it really isn't because these are dummy rounds. And in this particular environment, uh, that kind of is really important because, like I said, this is a hotel room. Not a whole lot of good safe directions around here, especially if you're using live ammunition. So the better solution is dummy rounds. And just in case you guys are wondering how you load a magazine, the loading procedure is usually fairly straightforward. Sometimes it requires a little bit of hand strength, but usually fairly straightforward. Take your thumb and press down on the top of the magazine. Sometimes there'll be, when you're first loading the magazine, there'll be a little follower at the end. Well, let's actually go ahead and show you guys what the follower looks like. Okay, so here is the follower. This is what pushes up on all the bullets. This will be different colors and different guns. Uh, Bursa decided to go with a silver one, but it's not uncommon to have ones that are blue or orange or some other color. That's not overly important, but the idea is that this is just what pushes up on the bullets. So when I'm going to load the gun, I need to push down on that just a little bit to relieve the tension. Then I'm going to take my round and I'm going to push down with it as well. And then I slide it back in and just keep repeating that process. Push down and then I'm going to push down again. And these are rounds, so it's a little hard to get them to meet up. And then you push it back in. And what keeps the rounds from popping out are these two little lips on either side of the magazine. The magazine feed lips is what they're called. 
and they keep the rounds from just spewing out of the end. So you keep doing that. Push down, push down, whoops, didn't quite get that one. Push down, push down, and then you slide it back. Push down, push down, and then slide it back until you've loaded it. And of course, it's a good idea to know how many rounds are supposed to go in your magazine so that you can count it out. Now, this one is kind of handy in that it has little holes cut in the back side. And under those holes, I don't know how well you guys can see it or not, but there are little numbers that tell you how many bullets it should take to get to each one of those little indicator holes. And this one maxes out at 13. So I cannot put any more than 13 rounds in the magazine. All right, so we have a magazine loaded with dummy rounds. We have a gun that we've already checked and seen that it is clear. Let's go ahead and do our first manipulation, which is loading the gun. Fairly straightforward process. You take the magazine, you put it into the handle of the gun, you slap it in there, give it a little bit of a tug just to make sure that it actually caught on there like it's supposed to. And that will get you rounds in the handle. But the gun is not completely loaded yet. Yes, you have rounds in the gun, but it doesn't matter until you actually get a round in the chamber, because that's the only way that it's going to fire is if you actually have a round up there. So to do that, we're going to need to cycle the action of the gun. We're going to need to manipulate the slide. Now, like I mentioned before, it helps if you pull back on the hammer, makes it a little bit easier to pull back on the slide. Make sure you get a good firm grip on the, the main frame. Make sure that your trigger finger is out of the way. It's not on the trigger, and it's also not on the slide that you're going to pull. So get a good firm grip on the gun, make sure your trigger finger is in a safe place, then yank back on that slide, and now since we are loading around, it's perfectly okay to let it slam forward. You don't want to let it slam forward if the gun is empty, but now that the gun has rounds in it, it's perfectly fine to do this. Just let it slam forward. If you're loading rounds into it, perfectly fine to let it slam forward in that case. Now the gun is loaded. You have rounds in the handle, and especially you have a round in the chamber now. And this is where you can decide what you want to do from the gun uh, from here. Do you want to unload the gun? It would be kind of strange to load it and then immediately unload it, but that might be the case. Um, do you want to uh, make the gun uh, ready to holster? If you're ready to make the gun ready to holster, you don't want the hammer back like this. And so that's where you're going to use the decocking mechanism and that will bring the hammer forward. Now, like I said, there's a little block internally that keeps the hammer from going all the way forward, uh, so it doesn't set off the round. But now the gun is in a state where it could be holstered. Now, some people will holster their guns with the safety on, and that is indeed very safe. The only problem is that when you do that, you have to, and you take out the gun to use it self-defensively, you have to remember to take off the safety first and then fire. That's usually very hard for a lot of people to do. So a lot of times people will decock the hammer like we did. So hammer was down when you loaded it, decock the hammer, and then they'll take off the safety, just leaving the hammer forward. And that's how they're going to put it in the holster. And we'll talk about holstering uh, more in another video. So don't worry about that yet. Okay, but this is a lot of times the condition will be in when it's time to holster it. Now, another manipulation that I want to show you guys is called the press check. It's basically the standard way that you check and see if the gun is loaded. Now, some guns like this one have kind of a cheat device on them that you can use to see if the gun is loaded. On the top of the slide there, there is a little lever that comes up just a little bit. You can see just kind of the edge there. It comes up just a little bit, and that is your loaded chamber indicator. If that is up, that tells you that you have something in the chamber. And there are other ways that this can be done. Sometimes on this little extractor bar right here, they'll put a little bit of red paint, and if the extractor gets pushed over and you can see the red, you know that the gun is loaded. Um, loaded chamber indicators of the various forms that they take are nice, but the problem is that they're not 100% foolproof. Loaded chamber indicators can fail. For example, on these little lever kinds, you can get grit that will build up inside of the lever action. And these things, by the way, are a pain to, to take out and try to clean underneath. So sometimes you can get buildup in there and it will just leave that little tip uh, just sticking up a, a little bit. And it will always look like you have a round in the chamber even when you don't. 
Another thing that can happen with these loaded chamber indicators, these, especially these ones right here, is well, they're kind of L-shaped. Okay, and the pivot point is actually uh, back here, so it's this this angle that pops up. But the whole thing is actually L-shaped, and it's the bottom part of the L that actually makes contact with the round, and the round actually pushes it up, so you get that little angular part that comes up. Well, this part of it down here can break, and if that part breaks off, then the top of the thing isn't going to get pushed up and it will look like it's unloaded all the time. So loaded chamber indicators like this are nice as long as they're working. You can get that little edge. They're nice as long as they're actually in good working order. The problem is that they're not always in good working order. Like I said, you can get grit and grime that builds up under them and it will look like it's always loaded. You can have the connecting piece break off on you, in which case it's always going to look like it's unloaded. So you don't really want to rely on them. They can be nice for people, but you don't want to rely on them. So the question then becomes, how do you see if the gun is unloaded? Well, on some of these guns, there will be a little bit of a gap between the slide and the uh, chamber, and in that gap, you'll be able to see the back of the round. Now, this bursa does not have much of a gap there, and so it's really hard to see that. So in those cases, you're actually gonna have to open up the top of the gun a little bit in order to check. So go ahead and bring your hammer back to make it easier to manipulate. Be very careful of putting your hand in front of the gun because you don't wanna do that if the gun is potentially loaded and you're just checking definitely don't want to put your hand in front. But a lot of times there will be little serrations on the front of the slide, and without actually putting my hand in front of the barrel, I'm just going to come up and grab those and open up the chamber area. I'm not going to open it up completely, just enough to see inside. And lo and behold, I can look in there, and I can see that little bit of red, which is our dummy round, and I can see, hey, this gun's loaded, and then I'll let the, the slide come home. Now, with normal rounds, that would either usually be a brass color, because a lot of times the casing is brass, or it will be a silver, because they have some kind of a nitride finish on them. In certain cases, you'll also have kind of a gray color for, like, aluminum case or steel case ammo. But you will be able to see something in there if you open it up like this. So that's how you do a press check. Pull the hammer back so it's going to be easier to manipulate. Usually, you wind up grabbing the front end of the slide and just pulling it back a little bit. Now, if you want to, you can also do a press check pulling the back end a little bit as well. And you'll still be able to look in there, and in this case, you can see the red, those dummy rounds that we put in there, and say, hey, it's loaded, and put it back into battery. And by the way, when you say that the gun is in battery, you mean that the chamber and the slide are meeting together. There's no gap between them. They're, they're as close together as they can get. That's in battery. Okay basically in a ready-to-fire state. All right, and we'll go ahead and decock the hammer, just because that's the, the normal condition for these guns. All right, so we've talked about how to load it. We've also talked about how to check the chamber. The other really important thing to know how to do is how to unload it. Now, sometimes, like I said, people will carry with the safety on, and that's a little bit of a liability, because when you go out to, to fire the gun, you're gonna have to remember to take the safety off. But sometimes people will still have the safety on, and when you go to unload the gun, you're going to need to remember that. Because a lot of times the safety will lock up the gun. This one with the safety on, I can't pull the slide back. So before I unload the gun, and pulling on the slide is going to be part of what you do, I need to make sure that the safety is off. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And I'm, the main goal is to get rid of the round that's in the chamber, but I also want to make sure that I don't load any new rounds into the chamber either. So I'm going to have to drop all of the, uh, the rounds that are in the magazine here. So I'm just going to push on the little magazine release button here. If you're right-handed, you can usually get to it with your right-hand thumb. And out will come the magazine. Now, this magazine already had one round stripped off of it in and put in the chamber. And we just saw that when we were press checking it. So the gun is not completely unloaded yet. I still need to get rid of the round that's in there. So to do that, again, pull back on the hammer to make it easier, and then just pull back on it fairly hard, and you heard something fall. That was the round that was in there. That was the round that was in the chamber. And that is an important thing to notice. Just because you take the magazine out of a gun doesn't mean that it's unloaded. You still need to get rid of the one that's in the chamber. So magazine first, and then you take out the round that's in the chamber. So let's go over those manipulations again. 
We have our magazine loaded with dummy rounds. To load the gun, we just go ahead and stick that in there, slam it in there a little bit, pull on it to make sure that it can't come out. And then to load it the rest of the way, we need to put something in the chamber. So we pull back, let it come forward. Since we're loading an actual round in there, it's just fine to let it slam forward. To check and see that we actually uh, have a loaded chamber, we just pull back on the slide a little bit, make sure that we don't put our hands in the way, but pull back on the slide a little bit, see that, yep, we have something in there. To unload it, we're going to drop the magazine, so put the, hit the magazine release, out comes the magazine. We need to get rid of the round that's in the chamber, pull back on the slide, out will come the round. Now some people, when they are, especially people who have dealt with their guns for a long time, will be able to get that extra round out of there with a lot more finesse. But when you're first starting out, I wouldn't recommend worry about catching that spare round too much. Okay, if you happen to open up the gun and the round falls on the ground like we had here, it's not really that big of a deal. You take out the round that fell on the ground, you wipe it off, you check it and make sure that it's not damaged, and you're good to go. Okay, a round on the ground is always going to be safer than one in the chamber. Now you'll see people who, when they're unloading it, they'll do special things where they tip it over and they catch the round and things like that. When you're first starting out, I would recommend that you not worry about any of that. Okay, just worry about safely unloading the gun. So make sure that your trigger finger is in a good spot. Make sure you're pointed in a safe direction. For right now, we're just pretending that that is a safe direction. A lot of times in practicality, it will be downward that you'll have it and you'll do your manipulations down kind of at waist level. Um, but for right now, we're pretending that that is our safe direction and just uh, rack the, the slide that way. And you'll want it to be fairly quick so you can pop out the round. Okay. Don't worry about necessarily catching the round or anything like that. Just pick it up off the ground when you're done. Not a big issue. All right. Though well, that pretty much covers it. Thank you guys very much for your time and attention. I hope that it was helpful for those of you who needed an introduction into those kinds of things and to see how those manipulations work. And our next video, we'll talk a little bit more about holstering concerns and those kinds of things. Thank you guys very much for your time. Bye-bye.